Oh, what the fuck? Is it black? Didn't steal anything from me. Oh shit, there's tape over it. Forgot about that. You get it today, FBI. You get it today. Yeah, I tell you what, man. People are dishonest, you know. Everyone says they love Robin Hood. Everyone's like, oh, man, I love Robin Hood. I love Robin Hood. I love Lil John. I love Fire Talk. I love Robin Hood. But then I go out and I brutally murder, uh, like, five public servants and behead uh, some men of God and I cut some monks' balls off for distributing their seed onto women. And all of a sudden, I'm being an asshole and have to leave the reenactment festival. It's fucking bullshit, man. I always think Nietzsche got it totally wrong because he died of shitty dick disease, but like, then it occurs to me that I know a couple of terminally uninformed permatoit writers whose bodies of work consist entirely of recycled Tumblr posts who somehow get professional writing gigs, while I still resign myself to helping teenagers cheat their way through their community college lecture classes with A-plus essays focused entirely on the Illuminati, immanentization of the eschaton, Karl Marx being fucking wrong, and other optimistic subjects for $200 per 10,000 words, and it just dawns on me. God ain't dead, but he is really, really sick. Possibly of shitty dick disease. Mainstream social critics are all repetitious hacks who stole the same five George Carlin jokes after he died because they have no idea what jokes are and were the same annoying douche kebabs who clapped at his stand-up instead of laughing at it while he was alive! Look, okay, I'm gonna preclude the, the inevitable criticism here. I don't want this to come off as bitching about, like, globalism and the Jews and shit, but, like, fuck this anime trend of naming the male protagonist something American, like Bill or Ted, when we all know damn well none of the Japanese voice actresses can pronounce those names. It takes me right out of it when that hot dark elf with fat tits is getting sodomized. She keeps talking about Kyle's cock in the subtitles, but it sounds like a 12-year-old schoolgirl saying, A kite is a chin chin! Like, fuck that, man. Kyle's a dumb name anyway. As are all names that involve the letter K. Just name your shitty protagonist Tiki Tiki Tembo, No Sa Rembo, Cherry Berry Ruchi, Pit Berry Pembo, and move the fuck on with your stupid emergency or whatever that shit's called ripoff. Yeah, I know. Uh, all, all those years, I, I kind of rallied against this idea that jokes are harmful and hurt people. And that people that do this are usually uh, obnoxious, easily mockable shysters who are simply trying to further their own political career and wouldn't understand the concept of taking criticism if it was shitting in their mouth and probably deserve at least a third of the mockery that they get because they can't handle the banter and won't take off their adult diapers. But, you know, I, I, I've been enlightened because I found out, you know, that like back in you know, 1925, you know, when, when in no, the Nazis were taking over, they were, gonna, they were going out and they were, doing, they were doing the takeover, and it was out in, you know, Joseph Goebbels is out in Hamburg or wherever the fuck Germans live, and he turned over to, to Adolf Eichmann, he said, now, now listen to this one, Eichy boy, this one is a real zinga, right? So, six million Jews get onto the train. You know... You really think a guy ridiculed in his youth for being named Michael Moorcock wouldn't turn around and, in his process of inventing one of the best and most heavily ripped off pieces of fantasy literature ever, he wouldn't name his most iconic protagonist Gaynor, but no, that's, that's exactly what he did. He named him Gaynor the Chaos Knight. Fucking all of Warhammer and the Witcher comes from it. Man, you really want to talk about losing a fucking battle. We can't even win evolution against insects. Like, the greatest human band ever, and they're named after beetles. The fucking most successful insect on the planet, evolutionarily speaking. More species of them than anything else. Plus the best band ever. We're fucked. Nils Hellstrom was right. Will Smith talking about how it's good to fail really strikes me as bullshit because of his immunity to career-destroying movies. 
John Travolta starred in one of the greatest detective films ever, The Blowout, and then immediately after fucked up a Saturday Night Fever sequel and spent a decade in flop after box office flop. If it wasn't for Pulp Fiction, he probably would have been unemployable after that fuck pile face-off of that shitty Scientology movie. And he'd probably also be even worse off in Scientology. And, you know, for another matter, Wesley Snipes was deadlocked in direct-to-DVD films for, like, seven years, basically unbroken. Steven Seagal hasn't been in a real movie in 15 years, and he never once partook in the making of Seven Pounds. With the ever-changing pendulum turn of time, creepypasta's prime mutagen of the future will be forcefully interjected artificial feel-goods in cynical media. Like creepypasta... This will come primarily from brain-dead teenagers and creatively bankrupt 20-somethings. Unlike Creepypasta, it won't be done anonymously. You will not encounter a more blatantly identified, watermarked, and marketed waste of life. Case in point, I've seen people argue that Garfield only hates Mondays because that means John has to go to work. He doesn't hate Mondays. He misses John. But I can prove for a fact in the Garfield canon that John Arbuckle is a fucking cartoonist and he works from home. Fuck you, fuck your sentimentality, and more importantly, fuck the depression that's driving you into this shit. Do something better with your life. Y you know, like, like uh, sit in front of your fucking laptop and scream about stupid shit all fucking day because that's, 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 doing, that's doing real good. That's doing real good fucking things with your life! Yeah, you know, they always say, oh, misery loves company. But I went through Misery's computer, and I found out that Misery prefers feet. Th this is probably, um, I'm working on another video that's all about, like, dreams. and Not like, not like aspiration dreams. I mean, like, the ones that happen while you're sleeping and pre comes leaking out of your dick because there's aliens sucking on your fucking balls. But anyway, the... I found out that there's it's actually really hard to do in, in dreams. It, it, it's you try to smile and hold it. It's really fucking hard. It's really, really fucking hard to fake an emotion in your dreams. Ruins the whole thing. I don't like life. Alright, so this wasn't actually even going to be in the video, but it was just so fucking stupefying that I find the need to share it. So I'm taking shit, and uh, this is an alright shit, you know, not, not too bad, not painful, or you know, not anything. It's a little, little um, flaky as the shit sometimes can be. And uh, I'm up there, I'm wiping my ass, and I'm doing the good ass wiping, I'm getting the toilet paper wet with the sink, and I'm dabbing my asshole. This is why you should always fucking grab the cripple stalls, by the way because they have a sink, and you can wet your toilet paper before wiping your asshole. It's real. you got to use your kidneys on that one. So I'm dabbing my ass, and I'm wiping it, and I'm just kind of tossing the toilet paper into the, the bowl, and I, I do, the, I do the, the ball up method, right? So I do this, and then the second one in, I do that. I, I dab my ass, and then I, I kind of just lob it in, and thinking, you know, hey, Kobe. And it, it hits the rim of the toilet seat, and bounces, and then goes in, but leaves a shit stain on the seat of the toilet. And I'm like, oh, well, that's a mistake. I better wipe that up. But So then I take the toilet paper, the next piece of toilet paper, and then I wipe my ass, and then I go to wipe up the shit stain on the toilet bowl. And because of my fucking, fucking 69 IQ cerebral downspurgers, I, it, I didn't establish in my mind that this was going to smear more shit, so I smeared the shit on the bowl and then dropped it in and realized what had happened. I thought, oh no, I better clean this up. So I get another piece of toilet paper and I wipe my ass with it and I wipe the fucking shit stain again and it spreads more and it just keeps happening and I finally, like, after the fucking eighth time... Fucking, there's like a pound of toilet paper in the bowl. It finally fucking occurs to me to fucking just use a clean fucking wet wipe. 
and I just I didn't establish the pattern, which is really bringing me to my, my roundabout point here, is that Jordan Peterson is right. 